Hi everyone, welcome to another video request. Some of you asked me, Daniel, can I lose my salvation? How do I know I'm saved? Does once saved mean always saved? So can a Christian lose his or her salvation? Well, as always, we need to take a look at scripture. Truth itself, especially with something as important as this, because this is about your eternal life. Let's not waste any more time. Let's get to it. Now, just very quick, if it's the first time that you're here, my name is Daniel and welcome to DLM Christian Lifestyle, where we still preach the gospel in truth and in love. So please subscribe and also click that notification bell so you won't miss any of our future videos. Now, can a Christian lose his or her salvation? Well, first, let me make something very clear. You can never lose something if you never had it in the first place. How many Christians are there in the world? According to the worldpopulationreview.com, there are around 2.4 billion Christians in the world. Wikipedia says 2.6 billion. Now, how many of them do you think are true reborn Christians? All of them? 80%? 50? 20? Now that you've given your answer, answer yourself this. Are you a true reborn Christian? And if you think that you are, also understand this. There are many people out there in the world who think that they are Christians, but they are not. Matthew 7 verse 21. Not everyone who says to me, Lord, Lord, will enter the kingdom of heaven, but the one who does the will of my Father who is in heaven. On that day, many will say to me, Lord, Lord, did we not prophesy in your name and cast out demons in your name and do many mighty works in your name? And then will I declare to them, I never knew you. Depart from me, you workers of lawlessness. You know, when I sometimes ask people, how long have you been a Christian? I get these answers like, well, I've always been a Christian. I grew up in a Christian home. Well, even if you grew up in a Christian home, if you go to church every week, if you go to Bible studies, if you're a deacon, if you're a preacher, if you do a lot of good works, it means absolutely nothing if you are not a reborn Christian with the Holy Spirit in you. That means when you went to God and accepted that you are a sinner, repented from your sins and accepted Him as Lord and Savior in your life, where you started to live a life of righteousness, where you turned away from your sin and started to live for God seriously. Because if you're a lukewarm Christian, He will spit you out of His mouth. 1 John 2 verse 19 says, They went out from us, but they were not of us. For if they had been of us, they would have continued with us. But they went out that it might become plain that they all are not of us. Now let this truth just sink in for a moment. You might have said all the right stuff. You might have shown all the right external signs of conversion. But it means nothing if it wasn't genuine. If there was no regeneration, if you are not a reborn Christian. Jesus said in John 3 verse 5, Truly, truly, I say to you, unless one is born of water and the Spirit, he cannot enter the kingdom of God. That which is born of the flesh is flesh, and that which is born of the Spirit is Spirit. Do not marvel that I said to you, you must be born again. The wind blows where it wishes and you hear the sound, but you do not know where it comes from or where it goes. So it is with everyone who is born of the Spirit. So the first thing you must realize, and I say this with a lot of love because this is serious, is that first, you cannot save yourself. Even with your best deeds, your best deeds are like filthy rags. 
You are only saved when God Himself reveals the truth to you and you truly, genuinely accept it. Accept Him as Lord and Savior in your life. And then He gives you the Holy Spirit and He makes you a new creation. You are reborn spiritually. Jesus said in John 6 verse 63, It is the Spirit who gives life. The flesh is no help at all. The words that I have spoken to you are spirit and life. And 2 Corinthians 5 verse 17 says, Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, he is a new creation. The old has passed away. Behold, the new has come. Now, is it possible to turn back to the old creature? For a butterfly to become a caterpillar again? For you to lose the Holy Spirit? Some people say yes and some people say no. A lot of people are fighting and have been fighting about this for a very long time. And the answer does not just lie in one verse, but in the whole Bible. And we have to look at the whole picture to understand this, to understand salvation. And there are five crucial things that you need to understand about salvation. Let's start with number one. Justification happens once. That moment when you accepted Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, that is the moment where God Almighty declares you as righteous. How can He do that? He's a righteous judge and He's got to judge righteously. And you being a sinner, you cannot save yourself. But now Jesus stepped forward and He said all the sin that that person did, the punishment required for that sin, I'll take it on myself and I will die in His place, in her place. And that's what He did. You accepted it. That means God the Father says, All right, my son died in your place. You are free. Romans 5 verse 1, Therefore, since we have been, past tense, justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. And then later in Romans 10 verse 10, we read, For with the heart one believes and is justified, and with the mouth one confesses and is saved. So that moment, and this is so beautiful, the moment you first believed in Jesus Christ, as your Savior and Lord. That is the moment you were declared righteous. Through your faith, meaning you had faith in Jesus Christ. And that faith is a trust. You trust in Jesus Christ for your salvation. That is something that you cannot do by yourself. It is something only God can do. Galatians 2 verse 15. We ourselves are Jews by birth and not Gentile sinners. Yet we know that a person is not justified by works of the law, but through faith in Jesus Christ. So we also have believed in Christ Jesus in order to be justified by faith in Christ and not by works of the law. Because by works of the law, no one will be justified. So just to make sure you understand this, your good deeds doesn't save you. You don't get to the end of your life where you stand before God and God says, All right, let's look at your good deeds and your bad deeds. All right, you did enough good deeds to be saved. It doesn't work that way because the good deeds, it doesn't take the bad deeds away. You still did them and punishment is required for sin. Good news is Jesus already took that punishment and you can now be saved through faith if you trust Jesus Christ. It is a gift, the free gift of salvation. It is a gift from God to us. Think about this. Whenever it's someone's birthday, let's say your mom or your dad's or your wife's, your husband's, it's a birthday and you have a gift for them. You say, hey, here it is. Here's the gift. The moment they take it, they accept it, they trust that you're speaking the truth, that it is a gift for them, they take it, they say thank you. So when they take it, it is not yours anymore, it is theirs. You're going to just say, all right, give it back, it's mine. You can't do that because you've already given it to them. Romans 3 verse 23, For all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God and are justified by His grace as a gift through the redemption that is in Christ Jesus. 
whom God put forward as a propitiation by His blood, to be received by faith. This was to show God's righteousness, because in His divine forbearance He had passed over former sins. And then Ephesians 2 verse 8, For by grace you have been saved through faith, and this is not your own doing. It is the gift of God, not a result of works, so that no one may boast. So, you receive the gift of salvation through faith, trust in Jesus Christ. It is not something that you can boast about and say, Oh, I was a good person. I did all these good deeds. Your good deeds does not save you. But it proves that your faith is real. Because if you truly believe in Jesus Christ, if you truly are a reborn Christian, made a new person, you don't want to live in sin anymore. You now want to live for Christ because you have His Spirit in you. So then you will automatically produce the fruit of the Spirit. That means good deeds. Let's move to number three. The Holy Spirit in you is the guarantee of your salvation. The moment you accepted Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior, God gave you the Holy Spirit to come and live inside of you. You were sealed with the Holy Spirit of promise. And it is the Holy Spirit that gives you new spiritual life. So you're not spiritually dead anymore. You're now spiritually alive, which is important because you can only worship God in spirit and in truth, because God is spirit. And Ephesians 1 verse 13 says, In Him you also, when you heard the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation, and believed in Him, were, past tense, sealed with the promised Holy Spirit, who is the guarantee of our inheritance, until we acquire possession of it, to the praise of His glory. God sealed you with the Holy Spirit. Sealed. Which means it is done. It is complete. You are saved. When we look at the Old Testament, they had to go to the temple to, to worship God. But now, your body is the temple of God. God lives in you. His Spirit is in you. And you can now Communicate with Him always, directly. You can live in the Spirit. 1 Corinthians 3 verse 16. Do you not know that you are God's temple and that God's Spirit dwells in you? Now, even as a Christian, you might fall and sin. But nowhere in the Bible does it say that you suddenly lose the Holy Spirit. No, because now you're a child of God, which means it's now a father-son, father-daughter relationship. And when you do sin, you grieve the Holy Spirit in you. And then you need to ask God, please, Father, forgive me. I have sinned. And if you truly have the Holy Spirit in you, you will really feel bad because the Holy Spirit will tell you what you did was not right. You will grieve. You will feel something is not right with my relationship with God. There's no way that you can be a true Christian and still continue to live in flesh, sinful, sinful flesh, and not worry about it. Where you just continue to sin and you don't go to God and you are extremely, extremely sad and regretful about what you have done. You will always go back to Christ if you are a true Christian and ask Him, Father, I'm sorry, forgive me. I don't want to let you down. I'm your son. I gave my life to you. I'm sorry for my filthy sin. Please wash me clean with your blood. And when you ask that of Him, He will forgive you. Then you are in the right standing again. And you don't grieve the Holy Spirit anymore. And then you can continue to walk in that relationship of father, son, father, daughter. Ephesians 4 verse 30 says, And do not grieve the Holy Spirit of God, by whom you were, past tense, sealed, for the day of redemption. You are a new creation. There's no way you can still be the same. If you had an encounter and experience where God changed you, regeneration, there's no way that you can still be the same. If you go into a safari and somehow you get attacked by a lion, will you be the same again? No. <laughs> if you experience anything big in this world, you will not be the same again. If you had an encounter with the living God, 
if He changed you, put His Spirit inside of you, there's no way you can still be the same person you used to be. You are a new creation. That means God Himself changed you. God's Spirit now lives in you and shows you the truth of life itself. And He guides you as well. Ephesians 2 verse 1, And you were dead in the trespasses and sins in which you once walked, following the course of this world, following the prince of the power of the air, the spirit that is now at work in the sons of disobedience, among whom we all once lived in the passions of our flesh, carrying out the desires of the body and the mind, and were by nature children of wrath, like the rest of mankind. But God, being rich in mercy, because of the great love with which He loved us, even when we were dead in our trespasses, made us alive together with Christ. By grace you have been saved. By grace you have been saved. You've been made a new creation. The old has passed away. The new has come. You are different. So, that means you're not spiritually dead anymore. You're spiritually alive because now you understand the spiritual things. We walk through the Spirit now and not through our old sinful flesh anymore because the flesh, that's death. That also means that a lot of lukewarm fake Christians believe that saying I'm a Christian gives me a license to sin. But that's just the thing. If you are a new creation, there's no way you can continue to live in sin the way you used to. Because... That Peter, Susan, John, Daniel is dead. He doesn't exist anymore. He, she is gone. Romans 6 verse 1. What shall we say then? Are we to continue in sin that grace may abound? By no means. How can we who died to sin still live in it? Do you not know that all of us who have been baptized into Christ Jesus were baptized into His death. We were buried, therefore, with Him by baptism into death, in order that, just as Christ was raised from the dead by the glory of the Father, we too might walk in newness of life. Wow! In newness of life. This means it's this whole new spiritual life that opens up to you. Because now you start to live in the truth. There's no way you can still be the same. Where you just say you're a Christian and just use it like jewelry. You put it on whenever you feel like it. Then you are not a real Christian. And I'm not saying this to be angry and judgmental. I'm saying this so seriously because it is serious. Your salvation depends on understanding this. And I don't want you to go to hell for all eternity. You see... If you are a real reborn Christian, that is your new identity now. Your deeds now prove that your faith is genuine. James 2, For as the body apart from the spirit is dead, so also faith apart from works is dead. So, if you have not been saved and you try to produce good fruit to be saved, you will not be saved. It is only the gift of grace that saves you through real faith in Jesus Christ. And if you truly have that real faith, you are a new creation with the Holy Spirit in you. That means that you will produce the fruit of the Spirit. You will have good deeds. You will know them by their fruit. The fifth thing and the last thing that you need to understand, and this is more important than people realize, God adopted you as His child. This is powerful. This means you are now part of God's family. You are His child, who He loves dearly. He is your Father, the perfect Father. John 1 verse 12, But to all who did receive Him, who believed in His name, He gave the right to become children of God. And Galatians 4 verse 4, But when the fullness of time had come, God sent forth His Son, born of woman, born under the law, to redeem those who were under the law, 
so that we might receive adoption as sons. And because you are sons, God has sent the Spirit of His Son into our hearts, crying, Abba, Father. So you are no longer a slave, but a son. And if a son, then an heir through God. Understanding that you are now a son, a daughter of God, changes everything for you. You might not have had a great earthly father, but God Himself is your father, your perfect father. This changes everything. This means that you can trust Him, that He's there, that He will take care of you, that He loves you more than you can ever understand. 1 John 3 verse 1, See what kind of love the Father has given to us, that we should be called children of God. And so we are. Do you understand how big and powerful God is that created this planet? And you are so small on this planet. And then if you compare that to the sun, and that's just one galaxy, and you look at all the trillions of galaxies, oh my goodness, God is big and powerful and almighty. And what is man that He loves us? But still, He loves you. Wow! Mostly people just see work opportunities, careers, relationships, and clothes, and all of these basic stuff. Cars, houses, and security, and uh, just stuff. Open your eyes, because you're only on this world for a temporary time. And it goes by like that. My two brothers already died in their early 20s. My father also died. Now you too will also one day die. And you're on this world and there's only two roads. But you are here at the beginning of those two roads. And in front of those two roads, big gates. One is very big and the road behind it, wide. The other gate, small. And the road behind it, narrow. Now if you are a reborn Christian, you made the decision to go through the narrow gate, which is Jesus Christ Himself the truth, the way, and the life. And now you are on this narrow road, the narrow road of sanctification. Matthew 7 verse 13, Enter by the narrow gate, for the gate is wide and the way is easy, that leads to destruction, and those who enter by it are many. For the gate is narrow and the way is hard that leads to life, and those who find it are few. So, you took one step of faith through the narrow gate. And now you're on this road of sanctification. And there are many more steps that you need to take. And every step should be a step in faith. But now, you need to realize that you are not alone. Because now, the Holy Spirit is in you. And you have, in your corner, God as your Father. Hebrews 12 verse 1, Therefore, since we are surrounded by so great a cloud of witnesses, let us also lay aside every weight and sin which clings so closely, and let us run with endurance the race that is set before us. Not only have you received God Himself as your Father on this road of sanctification, but you are already on this road of sanctification. You have already received all His promises in Scripture because you are His child. And those promises are for His children. And one of them is salvation. You have already received salvation when you gave your life to Jesus Christ. And when with God declared you as righteous. Jesus Himself says in John 5 verse 24, Truly, truly, I say to you, whoever hears my word and believes Him who sent me has, not might have, has, eternal life. He does not come into judgment, but has passed from death to life. This means that your eternal life has already started while you're still living because you're already on this road of sanctification. You're already a child of God. Your eternal life has already begun. The day you received Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, when you became a reborn Christian and received His Spirit, sealed until the day of redemption. So, when you die in this earthly, temporary world, only your body dies, but you live on. John 17, verse 3, 
and this is eternal life that they know you the only true God and Jesus Christ whom you have sent so you already have eternal life and no one not even the devil can take that away from you remember even Jesus himself said that if you believe in him you will not perish John 10 verse 27 my sheep hear my voice and I know them you see if you are one of his sheep when you come to that day he won't say like he will say to other people go away from me because I never knew you remember that verse the beginning of this sermon no listen to this again my sheep hear my voice and I know them and they follow me I give them eternal life and they will never perish and no one will snatch them out of my hand so even though you are in this world you're a reborn Christian you've already received salvation you look forward to the day that you will be with Christ but you're not with him yet you're still in this world which means God is not done with you yet he still has a plan and purpose for your life things that you need to do before you die you are in his hand and no one can snatch you out of his hand and now while you are in his hand he works on you he changes you to become more and more like Jesus Christ Philippians 1 verse 6 and I am sure of this that he who began a good work in you will bring it to completion at the day of Jesus Christ Wow what grace that God saved us that he gave us eternal life and now while we are on this road of sanctification that still he has so much grace for us that he still works on us to make us more and more into the image of Jesus himself Romans 8 verse 30 and those whom he predestined he also called and those whom he called he also justified and those whom he justified he also glorified God is no liar you can trust him you can trust his promises because he will not take his promises back he is the same yesterday today and tomorrow so you can trust his promises you can trust in his gift of salvation he will not take it back Romans 11 verse 29 for the gifts and the calling of God are irrevocable you see this is all about God a lot of Christians even though they are Christians they they struggle because sometimes when they do sin they feel so guilty and they wonder man am I really a Christian and they they focus on themselves because they want to be good enough but you can never be good enough this is not about you anymore this is about God who gave his promises to you he gave you the one promise of salvation the day you became a reborn Christian he justified you you became a child of God a new creation he gave his spirit and that spirit sealed you until the day of redemption and God now will keep that promise and if you look to yourself yes you will doubt but you have to look to God because it is God that saves you and he will keep his promise he is the one that guards your salvation 1 Peter 1 verse 3 blessed be God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ according to his great mercy he has caused us to be born again to a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead to an inheritance that is imperishable undefiled and unfading kept in heaven for you who by God's power are being guarded through faith for a salvation ready to be revealed in the last time you can and must know that you are saved please listen to me today you can have assurance of salvation if you want to be saved based on your good deeds you will never be saved because in fact you cannot be saved by your deeds it is a gift of God because of his grace and you receive that through real faith in Jesus Christ you cannot earn your salvation this is what every other religion almost believes and that is what sets us apart Hebrews 10 verse 14 says for by a single offering 
He has perfected for all time those who are being sanctified. If you don't fully understand this, ask God to reveal this to you because this is so important. Father, please help them to understand this. If you want to earn salvation by yourself, what you're actually saying is that which Jesus did on the cross for you was not enough. You want to add things to the cross. Why? Jesus said in John 19 verse 30, It is finished. And he bowed his head and gave up his spirit. Jesus said, Tell us die. It is finished. Paid in full. The work needed is done. So you can't go and work more for it. It is done. Now, what you also need to understand is, yes, you can fall into sin for a period of time. You can fall away. Look at David's life. He fell into sin for a long time, but then he came back to Christ. And that is what will happen if you truly are a reborn Christian. Because those who endure until the end are real Christians. Jesus said in Matthew 24 verse 10, And then many will fall away and betray one another and hate one another. And many false prophets will arise and lead many astray. And because lawlessness will be increased, the love of many will grow cold. But the one who endures to the end will be saved. You see, trials and tribulations will show you who you really are. A true child of God, a new creation with the Holy Spirit in you or not. Spiritually dead versus spiritually alive. James 1 verse 2, Count it all joy, my brothers, when you meet trials of various kinds. For you know that the testing of your faith produces steadfastness. And let steadfastness have its full effect, that you may be perfect and complete, lacking in nothing. This is what Jesus meant with the parable that He explained about the seed falling on shallow ground. Mark 4 verse 7, Other seed fell among thorns, and the thorns grew up and choked it, and it yielded no grain. And other seeds fell into good soil and produced grain growing up and increasing and yielding thirtyfold and sixtyfold and a hundredfold. Now, in verse 14, he explains this. The sower sows the word, and these are the ones along the path where the word is sown. When they hear, Satan immediately comes and takes away the word that is sown in them. And these are the ones sown on rocky ground, the ones who, when they hear the word, immediately receive it with joy. And they have no root in themselves, but endure for a while. Then, when tribulation or persecution arises on account of the word, immediately they fall away. And others are the ones sown among thorns. They are those who hear the word, but the cares of the world and the deceitfulness of riches and the desires for other things enter in and choke the word. And it proves unfruitful. But those that were sown on the good soil are the ones who hear the word and accept it and bear fruit thirtyfold and sixtyfold and a hundredfold. You see, the question should not be, can I lose my salvation? Instead, you should ask yourself, am I a real Christian? When I stand in front of God, will He tell me, go away from me because I never knew you? Or will He say, Welcome, my child. I know you. Come in. Ask yourself, when you repented, was it genuine? Did you repent of all your sins? Did you accept Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior because you understood you were a sinner and lost without Jesus? That He died in your place for your sins. You went through all that pain and suffering because of you. All that punishment that you should have received. He took it on Himself. You accepted it and you became a reborn Christian, a new creation. Are you a new creation? Do you see things differently? Are you spiritually alive? Or are you still the same old John, the same old Peter or Susan? Do you still continue to live in sin and you don't care about it? Let me tell you this. 
If you are a lukewarm Christian, you will go to hell. And I'm not trying to scare you here. I'm just trying to be serious and you need to understand the importance of this. This life is so short. If you die right now, where will you go? People get insurance, house insurance for fires and things that will never even happen. But when it comes to their eternal security, they take chances. Where are you in your relationship with God? Are you a reborn Christian? You know it deep within you. You know when you repented, when you came to Christ, was it really genuine for the right reasons? God says in Revelation 3 verse 16, Because you are lukewarm and neither hot nor cold, I will spit you out of my mouth. You know, sometimes people try to sound smart and they say, oh, there's only two types of people in the world and they say certain things. And then other people say different things. There's only two types. There are only two types of people. That is the truth. But the truth is this. You are either a child of God, a genuine, real, reborn Christian, or you are not. That means you are either spiritually alive or spiritually dead. And if you are not a real Christian, I want to invite you to accept Jesus Christ today as your Lord and Savior. Don't waste your time. You don't know what will happen tomorrow. I almost died two times in my life. God saved my life. If I died then, I would have been in hell. He took two of my brothers in their early 20s, Yanu and Etienne. Yanu was shot in Johannesburg. The crime in South Africa is and in America is rising as well. It's just this world, you never know when you will die. Unforeseen circumstances, health issues, you never know. And you know, I'm so thankful to God that my two brothers is in heaven, that they were right. And that caused me to become a reborn Christian, where God opened up my spiritual eyes, where I realized if I died instead of my brothers, I would be in hell. So I changed my life. And you know, it's not just about hell. It's about understanding who God is, how much He loves us. He gives us time. He gives us grace. But then, every day is a day of grace. But then, there's a day when it will be a last day. And then there will be no more grace. What are you doing with the time that God has given you? You know, every breath that you breathe is from Him. But there's a time when you will die. And then if your heart is not right with God, if you're not a reborn Christian, you will go into eternal punishment. Matthew 25 verse 46, And these will go away into eternal punishment, but the righteous into eternal life. If you want to be saved, then do it today. Pray with me now. Father, I realize I'm not a real Christian. I realize that if I die today, I will go into eternal punishment. Father, you created me and I used my life to live in sin. And I know and understand that I cannot save myself. I ask that you save me right now. I come to you, Father, and I ask you to forgive all of my sins, everything that I've done. Wash me clean with your blood, the blood from the cross. And Jesus, I thank you. I thank you that you died on the cross for my sins in my place. I accept you today as Lord and Savior of my life. Make me a new creation and give me your spirit, Father. From today, I will live for you, you in me and I in you. Thank you, Father. Thank you for saving my life. Amen. If you prayed that and if you really meant it with a sincere heart, then you can know that you are a true reborn Christian. Now what is in front of you is the road of sanctification. 
you're still a spiritual baby, but you need to study the Word of God. You need to grow in His Word to become a mature Christian. And to help you with that, please watch these videos here and I'll see you there. And always remember that God loves you and I love you too. Bye. Take my life and let it be content.